first would like to welcome Claire, as uh, this is your first meeting with us. Uh, is there uh, anything you'd like to kind of tell us a little bit about yourself? I know prior to the meeting you made a couple of introductions. But, uh, well, I've lived in Hadley since 1996, and I've been on the Historical Commission in the past. I've been a library trustee, and I felt that that background um, gives me good standing to serve on this committee, and I'm interested in, in historic preservation and um, preserving the integrity of the town's building. Great. So I'm guessing through uh, the website or through our Facebook page or somewhere, you've kind of seen what we're all about, what our purview is. Uh, yeah behalf of the select board and what we're doing yep. recently that's great so if there's any questions you have through all this want to want us to slow down no problem all right. yeah good um okay so we have uh, do we have any minutes from last time anything like that is there uh i didn't do one okay so we we need minutes from last week and then we need someone to take minutes today did i was i supposed to do last week who was doing them last week did you know Dave? I went at the last meeting. I wasn't there at the previous meeting. I did. Okay, I miss. I think I missed the last meeting. So Either Cameron or Dave was there. Okay, let's cycle back and see if we can. Uh, you can check the, yeah. check the tape. Yeah. Check the tape. the tape. Me too. Okay. Anybody on minutes today? <laughs> oh, that I'm looks like a, that looks like yeah. a raise of hands. <laughs> I it's just use it. I can keep it connected. No, no, yeah. We generally just cycle through everybody right. because uh, we, we at one point had a person that was uh, our, the administrative person and he didn't want to do it all every, every yeah. time and then we couldn't find anyone else to volunteer for that position. Uh, uh, as so. you see, we don't we jump to uh, raise our hand. No, <laughs> yeah, okay. that's, that's okay. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Uh, okay, so any communications or any other activities, uh, letters or anything incoming or outcoming from the um, Municipal Building Committee to others? Anything? Are you checking the website for emails on our... No. Was I that part know. of last night's uh, introduction? And I don't know it got, if it got transitioned over. I think okay. know, Andy was in charge of that and we really never picked that up. The, the Hadley Buildings Gmail account comes to all of us. So, yeah, so uh, there hasn't been anything on that other right. than our correspondence between us. Right. right. Okay, so this, <laughs> there may be another e email. Who, I don't know if the, uh, the website was ever set up before yeah. and transitioned over. And that's okay. a slow transition. So. Who could we ask that? Um, I, I generally. I can ask Dee Dee okay. to look into that because she certainly has the background. Um, yeah, it's not too, too much trouble. Just at least if it's just at least forwarded to Hadley Buildings at gmail.com, mm -hmm. then we'll all get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so nothing else incoming then. Uh, any report outs from other committees? Anything uh, of substance there? I know David's at the library committee today, so he's, he's unable to be there. Dan, is there anything on that? Uh, no, the fire substation or the senior center. Senior center meeting is coming up. Um, have no information until then. Okay. Um, yeah, Gary would have anything from the fire substation unless somebody else knows anything. No. Nothing. Okay. I think I going to the planning board scene. Yeah, I do have a set of plans, preliminary set to look at. They asked me to do that, so it's it's going well as far as. Not what percent complete are they in the design? It's not that 60 far. percent set. Yeah, it's probably that or less. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I heard that the library at the last meeting approved uh, uh, to go ahead with the construction documents. So, so they've apparently gotten through design development 60 percent set or moving to the 90s and 100 percent complete. We haven't sets. seen any of that. Though. We have not. No. Uh, that would have been nice. It, it must be out there. I'll email Allison and ask if we could see at least a PDF set of the documents. Um, just a look on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the only other correspondence was this document, which I have here. I have forwarded to Suzanne and to Allison to collaborate with the OPMs. Um, 
and maybe we can get into this a little bit now. I guess it's probably a good time unless Christian had anything on behalf of the select board you wanted to. I was just going to, at our last select board meeting, I said I'd kind of liaison with you guys in regard to the uh, clerk of the works, whatever we want to call that position. So I'm just kind of here to participate in that discussion and, you know, see if we need to talk about anything in particular or right. space in town hall, that kind of thing. So okay. that was my main purpose for coming. One, I, I think one of the primary issues at the very beginning is what actually was in the contract for the architect and air, with regard to the, the move, the demolition, everything. I think that nobody really has a good understanding at this point. And that, that could be valuable to review tomorrow at select board's meeting. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. apparently we started thinking that we would have to do a move, yeah. and you know and that's the whole idea that the last meeting said we talked about was to bring somebody on board to help us, mm -hmm. and that's when we brought up uh, Larry Tuttle. We could use that because the the the, um, the figures, the price figures were pretty high at the Slucknam's meeting, what we thought it would cost. Mm -hmm. But if they're doing a lot of that, doing the demo and everything else, then yeah. so, uh, we I mean, really yeah. need to know what what is actually left. I tried to get together uh, numerous times in this past week and yesterday with uh, Mr. Nixon yeah. to review that and that didn't happen unfortunately yeah, and I met with him today and I didn't think of bringing that up with him because I've been meaning to ask him for that contract to see what they he had. had I could go back and look through the old meeting he had a meeting uh, last week for a very lengthy time with the two OPMs he did okay. he did but nobody else was in that meeting yeah so I don't know but he did mention to me, as just pa in, in passing, when I told him I really wanted to get together and, and get an idea of what, what there mm -hmm. was left to do yeah. and what they were doing. Yeah. And he said, they're actually doing a lot. I said, well, yeah. nobody knows that. That's well, so um, what I can tell you is after Molly had indicated she wanted some position to find at one of the select board meetings, mm -hmm. and, I went through a list and created a rather lengthy list of scope items, which, you know, it would be potentially a clerk of the works kind of position. When I, when I was formulating that, I emailed both of the OPMs, uh, Colliers and Sullivan, and I said, you know, this is what I think this person would be. And I know it overlaps with some of your scope. And they both replied back and said, yes, your list is fully comprehensive. And yes, we're pretty much doing everything that you've listed here for our individual buildings. Mm -hmm. So um, pertaining to the move, I didn't get any clarification specifically if they're going to cover, you know, the cost of, you know, the, move, the actual move itself, the furnishings, transferring everything over there, you know, that... That's a little more detail than we talked about. Yeah, I, I think but, we need to know what that is. Yeah, but so w what I what I did was I, I took the um, the document that I sent the select board and I kind of boiled it down a little bit and I made it into a little table here with there's columns <coughs> on the right side which you know we have Larry Tuttle who's our project consultant we have potentially Gary Berg helping half of the town, mm -hmm. the library OPM, the senior center OPM, and our own committee, and you can add any others you like, but I went through that and I said, okay, so so if, you know, for instance, the first one, weekly reports of the select board, you know, is it, is it necessary to have a clerk of the works collect the progress reporting from the two individual buildings, or should the library OPM and the senior center OPM provide their own? reports for those buildings and, and submit them yeah and on that Dan do you remember when a couple this is a few months back at the uh, senior center building committee Phil had mentioned having some subcommittees for the construction and I forget if it was a weekly meeting that he wanted 
kind of a representative from town. I forget. I remember having the discussion, but then we got delayed in the planning board and all that, and I kind of put that other subcommittee definition aside. I don't specifically remember. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking, like, that yeah. That would be a weekly meeting where the minutes from that meeting basically yeah. would say, this is what's going on. I, I mean, what I'm... What I'm customarily seeing in the industry is at least if, if not a meeting actually just a sort of dashboard report that's submitted weekly mm -hmm. to the client saying this is the activities that occurred this week mm -hmm. this is what's occurring in the next two weeks here are some open items uh, here's the schedule here's the cost and that's about it and you get those every week and it's sort of a dashboard report you say okay it's going well or mm -hmm. oh we have a problem there's a ball and court item that has to be resolved wouldn't we expect each um, construction project, the senior in the library, two individual ones, they have weekly construction meetings where they're telling us if they're on schedule, to behind schedule, where the issues are, and if they weekly or biweekly, yes. Okay, because I'm on one at UMass for Dining Commons, and it's weekly. Yeah. Um, and everybody's up to date, and if this changes and whatnot, my question here is, uh, we seem to be hiring. Another person, which is overlapping the two OPMs for each project. Which is why I tried to extract that out and not put an X under anybody but the OPM for each of the senior center and right. the library for that task. And, and a couple, and a, I'm not being critical of your thing. No, I, I want you to be. I mean, that's uh, why we're here I'm talking. Just, I'm being, uh, I guess, uh, conservative as a taxpayer that we may be hiring another guy that we're already paying two people to do. My understanding, talking to Gary years ago when he was hired, he was hired for building maintenance, and because there was no money for building maintenance, then he started filling in at the highway. Now you can't get him out of the highway because they think he belongs to them. <laughs> you know. And that is a critical thing we, that has to be addressed. Yeah. Or we're so, going to lose Gary, too. Mm -hmm. So so here you are, we're paying Gary, that's supposed to be doing building maintenance that could probably handle pretty much coordinating the whole move as I think we discussed a couple meetings ago and now we could be um, hiring Larry for more than is needed I don't know out of, of these four lines I saw one that probably makes sense um, but um, I don't know I'm just on the conservative side I'm looking maybe we're paying for something that we don't need well I think we did pull back quite a bit mm -hmm. and in my view where Larry can come in is he's an out he's an outsider. He's said he's a, out there. He's not an employee. And I think what we're seeing there's there's a little bit of tug of war that we're seeing with some individuals. And uh, Larry can dampen that quite a bit. One of the big issues that has been talked about on the side is. And everything that all the departments want fit in here. And there are a couple departments that saying, no, it's not going to fit. I think that could be a good place where Larry can review what they have, review and, and give them an, an idea of how they can transition over to the two spaces, this space and, in Town Hall and then Goodwood. I mean, our primary focus is to try to put a lot of the storage over on the second floor of Goodwin mm -hmm. for the time being. Yeah. And, and I agree and with that. This. Yes. And I think that that's where he could probably help. But you're, you're quite right. I mean, when we first start talking about it, uh, we, we were thinking of this grandiose many hours, and I think it's going to be extremely... A uh, small amount of time right now that we might need him to jump in on a couple of days. And, and that's good from where I was coming from mm -hmm. on this, but you know, like, okay, so Larry's the outsider and he says, well, okay, yeah, you guys can fit. But then I'll back it up a little more. The selectmen, because they're, they're the top crew here. Mm -hmm. They should say, no planning board, you are going to fit here because well, you know, they did. <laughs> well, you know, whatever, whatever, whoever it may be, I'm not trying yeah. to pick on one or the other, mm -hmm. but it, it could, could, and in my mind as a taxpayer, should 
and down to sooner or later somebody just says, no, we have to. We don't need to spend more money for somebody else to tell them no. Um, you know, and that, that's my one personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's ours too, to some extent. But I think they also, where Larry can help a little bit is giving some of the other departments some um, guidelines, guidance on possibly transitioning some of their furniture. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. As you can see, we're a hodgepodge of, of everything. And one of the things that we've, throughout all this discussion is get away from the desks and start, because nobody's using desks anymore. Everybody's using uh, laptops and, and uh, we're, Tables are fine, right. so uh, I I think act quite honestly, you're you're absolutely right. The amount of time that Larry's going to spend is very extremely minimal when the time comes. But I think his expertise is going to be helpful in some aspects of of, of the move. I think I think for him to help validate the, the program fit. Mm -hmm is good because it's a kind of an in independent party yes you know i think everyone else recognizes everyone in town has some kind of agenda and if we bring the professional in to organize things there's a little more credence to it i guess credibility um i, I guess you know and so to, to your like point this. to your point i i did try and extract the things that would be duplicative but i would also say when you go to those meetings those construction meetings it is highly unusual not to have the client represented mm. by somebody, you know, and, and we don't have a director of planning and design, or we don't have a, you know, we don't have yeah, a head planner, we, have we, don't, campus we don't have staff a chief engineer, we, we, you know, we have, we have Gary who may fill in, you know, Tim's representing the building code, but it, it's a little bit odd not to have somebody that's managing the program sense and we have but a lot of a lot it, of money being spent isn't your OPM for each project supposed to be met, um, representing the town yes yeah. they are yeah but yeah. yeah they are well yeah I, there's always a but yeah one of the yeah. one of the problems that we've recognized through this process is, is the two PMs are acting on behalf of the committees not so much on behalf of the towns or the mm -hmm. town and, and and to that end, we haven't seen a lot of overall management like the schedule. We haven't seen a master schedule that shows all the, all the construction happening for each of the buildings, when and where, where the money's got to get spent. It just it, it it's a little bit it's a little bit split, you know. And I mean, we could probably me put that uh, maintaining overall program schedule for o both OPMs. We could put that in there. Well, their laps. Like, I mean, yeah. they came up with a unified site plan for that whole thing. They managed to. Yeah. So <laughs> why can't they do a schedule that is somehow yeah. overlapping at least a little bit? Um, yeah. Oh, I would hope that they would. Yeah, I don't think that's too big of an ask. But then, for people uh, out here to review that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you guys don't presume though, unless yeah. unless one of them attaches it to their scope, they're not going to care about the other mm -hmm. buildings' activities. Yeah. Until it. It's detrimental. To yeah, I could projects. see them coming up with a schedule, maintaining it, or managing conflicts. That could be, you know, we might be setting ourselves up for a little bit of yeah. who's got the authority to bring this crane in or whatever today, or close the road off today, so that they can do these things. I you know, that's down where it gets down into the road. That's treatment. going to be a critical issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're going to, there's going to probably be some major issues over there. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a very tight. And if somebody's off their schedule by a day or two, it might affect the other. I mean, those are the things that we're going to have to really keep an eye on and, and try to figure out how we're going to handle those things. We don't have anybody in house that. Yeah, that's where that's where it gets that scary. To right now, the referees is, is the select board. Yeah, yeah, and, and and so be that as it may, you know, you'll have agenda items at all of your meetings to address discrepancies or concerns that people have, you know, I mean, so yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. If, if that's what the select board is willing to undertake rather than have somebody else do that. I think that was the intention is to have somebody that could be the go-to person when, you know, this shit kind of hits the fan right. out there. Right. 
right. somebody can answer the call and kind of be the authority that makes the decision. Mm-hmm. You and know. is this that this Larry Tuttle person? Well, well Larry's yeah, are this is this clerk of the works position. Yeah. Like, who, so I, mean, I should probably know this, but is so, Larry Tuttle a work for the town? No. Do I, do I know he's who he is? A, he's is? a consultant that we, consultant. we hired through the municipal buildings committee. He's been on contract as a as an on call as needed basis okay. and has performed a couple of tasks for us and and gone it's gone well. Um, when we were looking at a more extravagant clerk of the works position, I think we considered the potential for having a, you know a request for calls actually okay. issued yeah. for okay. a person. We've talked internally about whether that makes sense and if we want to scale this back, do we simply use the project consultant right, that we, we already have, have. Okay. All right. or someone else or whatever? But that's right now. I put his name in there as you know the and guy. Would he just be billing hourly as yes. needed? With a maximum of we, you know, we have a maximum. I think it's like nineteen or twenty hours a week. We'd have to keep mm-hmm. under that, or else we'd run mm-hmm. into union issues so and all kinds right. of things. So. Under. Well, when the building start getting going, then it might bump up to that. And, and might yeah. I think there's several things that we could use him for. One is dealing with the move and all this stuff, and then yeah. then later on, what we just talked about, yeah. the critical oversight and the, the issue is going to be on site. Probably. Yeah, I just have seen like let's take I, I don't want to like labeling, but Zaturka Park it was kind of managed by committee. And there was a lot of delays there because nobody was the person that was making in charge that was making decisions. So they'd run into an issue, and then yeah. they would put a the contractor would put a call out to the committee, and then they'd meet, and then they try to you know, and it just got it's lost. Crazy. Yeah, and it was we can't do that on these projects. No, over no, here. no. So Larry, if he's the person, would be if there was a issue between especially like you said scheduling between library and senior then he'd have to get together and talk it out and then make mm-hmm. the call yeah. i guess the yeah. problem is he's not a, a person of authority necessarily i know right? that is so yeah. that's really a, you're putting somebody in that position without really giving them the purview to to, so to then tell them like it is you're going to tell them what to do yeah but <laughs> if he's not a person of authority other than trying to hash it out between three people then where do you go now? Who does he report to? The consultant. Does he report to? Does he report to you? Or? Tim manages his contract only, sort of by default. Yeah. Um, okay. But but the committee has it's a contract. A committee. Ultimately, David Nixon has the contract as okay. our administrator. Uh, but yeah, which is ultimately the side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is ultimately the voters. So. <laughs> so so but the thing is, if there's an issue of, um, we had rain, we got to get the crane in, yeah, Monday. Um, but the seniors say no, you can't because we got our cement trucks coming in on Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's not enough we space. Got, we need somebody. You, that you need a person with authority that can. And yeah, if you're gonna yeah. hire Larry. He's got to have. I would. He's see. got the knowledge of the building. Oh the yeah. Building. So, I mean, he would be. Uh, in my view, he'd kind of be the little bit of a voice of the select board. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe if it was critical, he could call a handful you're of us and you. get that. Yeah. And then have that authority. Because if you're going to hire him with no authority, he's, he's kind of... Well, that's what I mean. He'd kind of have authority because he would say, this is the issue, this is what I suggested, are you good with this? And then yeah, you've say, got to yeah, empower him it. somehow, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, whatever yeah, that is. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so that's, that, that's the real kickers. And he, uh, I think in, in a lot of cases, he's just going to, um, you know, he's going to go to Gary with a question, say, well, what, what would you do? You know, the crane's coming... The cement trucks are taking the space, and you got a whole pile of insulation air taking up the room that's, that both of them need. What do you do? Well, yeah, does Gary is Gary better for that role of kind of being well, that? I think he's the better. problem. Yeah, and he's he good at it. But the problem is we've never put him into that position. That position since we've hired him, mm-hmm. and that's been something that we've argued for a very very long time since the inception of this committee. Mm-hmm. That we've said that that is a huge stumbling block in this town. I, I think he's got, he has the, the knowledge and the common sense. And it, and he you know, knows where to go if he yeah, doesn't. Yeah, he's got the wisdom to at least make a decision that is gonna, you know, and probably work out. And 
quite honestly, there's a lot of us that think he does have it, whereby there is a few that, especially one select board member that said he, they felt he wasn't. But, one that works for the town as well. <laughs> but, I mean, he, <laughs> yeah. you put him in the responsibility, he'll take it. He'll, he'll go. Yeah, anyway. yeah. And if he, you know, he seems pretty. But he, I mean, I think he's also comfortable working with Larry. Too. Yeah, and he can. I think so too. If we have Larry there to help him on some of these critical things, but you know, if he's over there and say no, <laughs> truck, you get out, let the, let the crane in. Yeah, he should have the authority to be able to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Larry, we I think, and Larry could help on the logistics on some of the other things he might need some second opinion on. But the problem is we can't give him that responsibility because he doesn't have it right now. And that's been a huge problem. And why doesn't he have it? I, he doesn't, I he's not performing the job description that he was hired for. Is he? I, I don't know. No, was no he job, hasn't. Was his job description changed though? Since no, it never so, did. So really, he shouldn't be in that dump truck. <laughs> right. You know, except well, unless he has no work to do on the building. That's kind of the problem, right? Because if we extract an employee from operations at DPW, oh, yeah. you have to backfill that employee with right. someone else. Right. And well, thereby creating a new position in town. And that's going to get complicated, I'm guessing. And, and the whole idea when he, we hired him was his primary responsibility was, was the buildings. Mm -hmm. And then he... We didn't think it as a uh, a forty hour work week mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that there were going to be weeks that he wasn't needed for forty mm -hmm, hours, mm -hmm. and whereby it would be good to have him to do DPW stuff, and he was perfectly willing to do that. But the problem is the whole thing got flipped, mm -hmm. and his whole response. Yeah. I mean, and now that there are big building issues. Yeah, up. yeah, yeah. Maybe it should be flipped back where mm -hmm. when there's a snowstorm, yeah, okay, you'll go plow snow. If there's water breaking and they need a hand, fine. Yeah. But picking up sticks and running for stuff at Home Depot, yeah, yeah he shouldn't be there. No. Yeah. Because he, he's but he really never, a valuable person. I mean, Skill. one of the things is like, it was like, oh, I'm the problem I have with Dee. Uh, we bring him in at a very low salary for the, the, probationary period mm -hmm. with the idea that they're going to be bumped up to their quote real salary and never happened. Yeah, yeah. It never happened with Gary and it never happened with Dee. Now there's a good chance I'm going to lose Dee. Mm -hmm. And that stuff's got to stop here. And well, it's a little off track for today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it goes back to what the issue is. But I think, yeah, you made the main point. Yeah. yeah but um, Gary, Gary does have a good a lot of qualifications that could help yeah and i think he's the answer for a lot of these questions but i'm you know i've been shut down anytime i said something like that i don't know i, don't know. I, I know and i have been too so the, yeah. the the person that does this has to has to commit probably a couple days a week during the heavy parts of this construction oh, yeah. has to be very well organized and understand how to read the schedules, the, the, you know, the reports, walk the job site, kind of know what's happening. I'm not saying Gary can't do that. I'm just kind of, I'm describing the position you all in hopes that it gets us somewhere. But I, but I, I think that person also has to have some empowerment from the mm -hmm. select board and be recognized yes. by the OPMs as such as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it sounds to me, I, uh, we, we still think we need somebody that's, that's managing things on our, our, you know, looking out for the interests of the town in that sense. But I think he needs to have authority if he's going to be, yeah. be there. Mm -hmm. Somewhat, even like you said, if you, if you need to call two or three selectmen yeah, uh, to get... that's what he needs to get the authority then. Right. But it's like and we can't be there, you know, hours no, a day. Everybody yeah. has jobs. So. Yeah, yeah. Right. But, but I also think Larry in that position would do very well. He's just not a town employee, so I guess that's, you know, 
-hmm. what I'd say is you could go either direction or you could solicit for somebody entirely new but that person just has to sort of you know be empowered somehow um, so anyway back to the to the little table I did um, Christian just for you guys to look at and I did email this to you mm -hmm. but um, did, okay you know um, everything else is kind of straightforward I, I in, in Larry's column simply you know the program needs from the departments the furniture um, reuse of the Goodwin library storage uh, on the second floor <laughs> just kind of working through some of the logistics of where, where all that stuff happens um, and then you know if, if the renovations to town hall are moderate to extensive somebody's just going to have to make sure contractors are in and out a year and that things are working smoothly put that in Gary's plate um, somebody to master the, the the individual department relocations this is kind of like what we did with the with the asbestos removal yeah. here you know and that went well I don't know who did what with that Tim but I know you and Gary were involved yeah um, that, uh, quite a bit you know quite a bit and I mean everybody stepped in and we gave tasks to a lot of individuals in the town hall with regard to uh, the phones and everything else and it, it actually was extremely smooth uh, so it all did fall into place but Gary was instrumental to deal with bringing in the movers and going through and scheduling the uh, DPW people uh, and you know he worked constantly in here with the um, contractors he did all the um, sign-offs for the asbestos um, hauling which is very lengthy yeah. and he, he had no problems with doing that mm -hmm. um, but yeah I my main focus was just helping with the schedule and going through and with all the different departments and say hey you need to do this uh, how about you managed that at the department meetings and things yeah, like that. Yeah, we did it. I, I, I did it during the week and we I went through what they needed to save and what they needed to take over and you know, said, no, you can't take three, four, five, six boxes. You can only have two. <laughs> so, so however that worked, it worked, it worked out. That, and it, and well, this, and it, and this Gary, would be very similar to yes. that, I think. And uh, I mean, the the issues that have been brought up so far is you know certainly the planning board doesn't think that they can fit everything in here uh gary and i are going to look at that one more time we do believe that all their files can actually fit in here it might be in front of the windows but it will fit okay um no no table larger than this i think it's just their files and a table will be the only thing in here. And I think it will work. But we'll, we'll deal with that again. We'll look at it. Then we've gone through everybody else uh, and the, the changes, the minor changes. We've talked about how we can do some of those um, construction, minor construction changes uh, during the daytime. Some of it has to be done during the day. And it shouldn't be a problem. The major issue is going to get rid of that safe downstairs that we've never used. Mm. Uh, but we know how it, we've looked at it already, it can fit out the front door uh, without a problem after the walls come down and we can roll it out, then we're gonna have to figure out what to do with it. We'll probably sit it on the front porch for, for a number <laughs> of weeks until we deal with it. But I think that's pretty much worked out. Um, Again, when we talk, I think that furniture is an issue. And I, I think we do have to come up with some type of funding to make some modifications. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's, and it's a good opportunity to make some changes, especially in the big meeting room. And there's been discussion that's not a good layout mm -hmm. set up. Mm -hmm. It might be a good time to uh, check, redo that and use those tables that are there. At, for other different rooms here, mm -hmm. one of the, one of the rooms, this is plan going to be planning across the hall, is going we're thinking about setting up another meeting room, mm 
we could use one of those tables in there and get a better table for uh, the meeting. Yeah. And we can go down to uh, the place down in West Springfield mm -hmm. to look at the used stuff. But we have to come up with some idea where the, this money's coming from. Yeah, I think we need kind of a good idea of the budget. I mean, that's where probably Larry could help us maybe a little bit is come up yeah. with some of those budget numbers so that we can... I, well, I we've mean, come I up with the too. dollar figures for the construction, mm -hmm. and we have a good handle on that. It was like $23,000. And was that all the prevailing wage? Yes, it's it all. Is. okay. Yeah. Uh, that I know that keeps on being brought up, but yeah, um, um, yeah it, okay. it, it's okay. Yeah. Um, but one of the thoughts was where the money was going to come from and we, one of the things that we had talked about in the past was to um, hold off on some of the other projects that we're going to do. There's a hiccup with that. It's the five major projects that we had on the books that went through capital, mm -hmm. even though we had um, estimates for all of them, mm -hmm. the, the money that we voted on was a lot less on each project so we need to discuss can we is there a possibility of how to can we still do those projects okay one project that's vital which we um gary larry and myself worked on uh for a couple hours this morning was the last part of the hvac over at um public safety Oh, okay. It has to be done. We and had that. We had that go through in the fall, though. The HVAC funding for over there, right? Again, that was one of the projects that we had had an estimate on, and it was reduced dramatically. We don't. The the funding isn't there, but it has to be done. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the money's coming from. The dollars were approved, and they're adequate for the they work. No, they're not adequate. So no, none of the projects that we had listed. For this year, had, is adequately funded. Not a single one. They were all reduced at the last minute. I don't know why. Oh, for the before the ballot, before okay. the warrant. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. So, we have to balance the budget, kind of. It was to balance the budget, but yeah, it, yeah, it doesn't work. A, okay. it, it doesn't <laughs> work if you have estimates and you can't. Right. Yeah, it does. Oh, well, we, on paper, huh? yeah, because we've been putting contingencies and incidentals into the, the estimates so that we don't have that issue with future work. And I know the first couple we had out of the gate, we were a little shy. We had to go back, ask for more. Yeah. We learned our lesson and yeah. we, we put in the right amount with a little bit just well, we to, also, you know, know, to, you to know. adjust for inflation. And, yeah. So but we was cut. I don't know how that got missed, no. but uh, and I mean, we have we can put it in the I, I think on the town meeting warrant for the well. The I think the spring. only way we can work this out is get a good understanding and feel for for what's what the shortfalls are, mm -hmm. what we really desperately need to do, mm -hmm. and get you know a promise mm -hmm. that we would take it out of existing funding, and then give back. And replenish those line items. Yeah, if we can do that, I don't know if we can do that. And some so of them we can't. We have to vote on it. You know? Yeah, some of them yeah. we're gonna have to just wait. Yeah. Could could you or Gary put together a table for those? We projects? have been trying to do that, but we cannot. We've been having difficulty getting what funding we have. I've well, well, but. It was on the warrant, right? So whatever, let's theoretically, what was on the warrant was approved. Somewhere that money exists for that yeah. project. Yeah. That's not the same as what the estimate is at. So I would just like to see what the disparity is for each of the five projects. And then yeah, like the one over at the public safety was um, estimated at sixteen thousand. We voted ten. We're short six. Yeah. Um, there's a couple other projects over there. The same thing happened. Got estimates to redo something. The the police chief did, and it's sixty percent of what it was. Okay. Well, it's yeah, because we went through all those things. So yeah, I mean, it was. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It, that happened. 
but um, yeah, but, but we have to come up with then funding here, and and I think you know there was some discussion of using the the leftover Russell Street, uh, Russell School money, and I don't think it's there anymore either. So yeah, because if we wait to the town meeting to try to do these changes, we're going to be no, we can't wait. Way I'm behind. Worried, yeah. We can't wait. So let's look at the, the table of all the, you know, costs and in in what we have allocated and then prioritize them and say, you know, this is what we want first. And then maybe we speak to the finance committee or someone else to see if there's any, anything else. If not, we go for spring. Well, some of them are under capital. I don't know if you can go from one, because they were listed separately. Yeah, I don't you know. You can go from one to and throw it into another. I mean, we can do things with account balances and all that, you know, trading them around, but that usually happens at the meet, that town meeting, mm -hmm. not just yeah. on a Tuesday. So I don't know. I don't know what we can do. Isn't there a least. slush fund for emergency something happens somewhere in town yeah I mean we have capital stabilization and that kind of thing we might be able to pull something out of there but yeah. I don't know you know I don't just don't know enough about municipal finance and where we can grab things from but, but I guess I'm asking uh, as the select board um, do you think that you guys could go and uh, say we need 23,000 to prep for these buildings you know for the move or does it have to go to town Tell me vote. I would hope we can do something like that. Yes. What you're saying, the first thing, not the second. Right. Yeah, thing. no, and, and, and I, I just don't know. I okay. just don't know enough to know. If we so can. we have we have estimates of all the work that yeah. we had shown, and, and all, with electrical and plumbing at, at um, prevailing wage came out to twenty three thousand. Looks like we're not going to do all of it because. Um, Joni and this uh, is Linda for here for the yes. for the move for the uh, for the, the renovations yeah. here for yeah. the move. So we have the construction stuff that we the renovations we want to do here for the move. Mm -hmm. We have to also look at furniture. Can we get some money together to buy a new table or something like that? Yeah, uh, that that's that, there's a need for that. Yeah, we had that in capital last year that got cut out. Yeah, and then yeah. there's going to be money. That we need just to do the move. Mm -hmm. That's going to be above and beyond the money that's already in those those two projects. Mm -hmm. We should check that. To make well, sure. that's what we need to check tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. What really is all covered? Be, by yeah, it'd be interesting project. to know what what they covered if anything for that. Some of it's covered, but not all of it. Yeah. We, I mean, certainly not moving planning board over here is going to be no. covered. Those are the things. It might be moving the senior center. From one place to the other, but not moving people out of the senior center. Well, you know that's a good question. Is there money to move them? Possibly, but is it to move them over there and then move them back? Maybe not. Yeah, I don't think there is that. No. Money. Yeah. Those are the things we we have to go through all that. I, I would be shocked if there's money in that new building budget to move anybody out of there, including yeah, the senior. Especially budget. now with the the. How long the delay? So. Yeah, you just you just expect that. Okay, before you're going to renovate your house, you're going to get out of there, right? Um, and that wouldn't be in the budget. But um, before I lose it, might be. Yeah. Um, did you guys ever check the university for free furniture? We always do. Okay, because they what is it every Wednesday? I think they have that. Yeah. Place open. Okay. Okay. I feel like oh. that's where most of the furniture. Yeah, most yeah. of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God forbid we get something new every yeah. year yeah. 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 for four employees. The one one thing they don't have a lot of <laughs> is large tables. Right. They never have had large tables. Well, if you could hold off another year and a half, we'll have a bunch of them out of the dining hall that we're uh, going to be knocking down. So <laughs> the, the round ones, or All right. we have round, we have the tall ones, we have the long ones. We can have the long, one. narrow ones like a conference table. Well, basically like this with eight footers, you know. I've thrown the idea out to the um, historical commission, uh, senior center, building committee that, you know, this this building's been here for a while. Some people are really attached to it. Thank you, David. Um, and a lot of people don't want to see it come down. And a lot of this stuff is not worth very much. 
but you have these little architectural details like the, these little uh, keystones. keystones up mm -hmm. here and, and this whole entranceway that's nothing special, it's just cast concrete and sandstone. But if that stuff were to be auctioned off as architectural salvage and generate a little bit of money to, and see if we could pull a bunch of those nine of these and one of these entrances, maybe somebody in town is interested to use it on a different construction project or they'd like it like to save a few because they're doing something it's all a brick right my, my well, first, first thought of that is it costs you more to, to get it out of there versus, safely versus, salvage it yeah, yeah. versus having yeah, I, the I, claw come in and knock the those building those are out. very difficult to salvage to take out but any, i mean that, that that's a for instance i mean if yeah, there's no, anything in the building that, well i told um alan yesterday when he brought this over to me that um, a lot of the kids from years ago would like to have a brick just as a memento. And I, I, I think that that would be a great thing for the town to, to just give the bricks to the old, from the kids that, that went to that school. Yeah, I went to kindergarten, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I was just thinking of some way to generate, you know, Money out of the loss. Right. I mean, there's there's not much you can salvage. I mean, I, what are they going to do with a bunch of that kitchen equipment? Some of it is in perfect condition. Are they going to sell it? Are they going to auction it? Well, that, What's going to happen with that money? There's going to be an auction. Yeah. There's some, you know, like, can can that can you make that compensation that quickly? I doubt it, but at least it brings some of it mm -hmm. as a potential. Hair well, brings give, give the bricks yeah. to the kids. Get the. <laughs> <laughs> A sixty-year-old, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, I'd give, I'd give you five or ten bucks yeah. for one, but yeah. you could give it to me if you want. I did go there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, but there are a lot of moving parts, so I guess that's yeah. the, the the point to all of this is that we we need some some coordination here. Um, so anyway, Suzanne yeah. and and uh, Allison have this and are gonna float this with their OPMs just to see if it makes sense to them. Okay. And, and hopefully we've reduced the amount of overlap so that you can see there's it's mostly just you know each of them taking care of their own buildings and when it comes to getting things like the, uh, the owner's manuals the warranties um, as built drawings uh, organizing training for Gary and anyone else that's going to need it I mean all that's going to need to be coordinated by somebody but you know it, it's not heavy lift it's just things we, we don't want to lose track of in the end is that in their contract that they would train Gary or a person or I don't know for sure normally there would be um, uh, part of the construction contract mm -hmm. where the uh, the contractor would be obligated to do that so then are we it, beyond it that be point to get it in there if it isn't I think it's in there okay. I mean a lot of the OPM uh, the reason we have OPMs that was driven by re legislation, I think. So I, assuming some of that is in there, but I don't know for sure. We'd have to double check. It's not always part of the OPM's contract. It is though. Okay, it may yeah. be part of the, the contractor's mm -hmm. responsibilities. Yeah. So, you know, just it's uh, you know when you get a ton of as builts and CDs and warranties, how are you going to organize them? Are you you yeah. know are you gonna, you know is 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 Tim going to put a file together and. In that missing cabinet mm -hmm. over there. That's <laughs> what's happened in the past. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just, it should be it should be pretty well organized. And, yeah. you know, and there should be duplicates. There should be one in the building and one off site, just in case. Yeah. So I think what we're hearing is that is that you and, and Gary probably can handle some of the lighter lift items, internal coordination, but somebody is still going to have to be coordinating things on a larger scale. Uh, when are the, the, the both buildings supposed to be done? Do we know? If we had a master's Sometime plan. in 2020, yeah. right? Sometime in 2020. And when is the potential moving out happening? It's supposed to be in April. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that also, when I was a library trustee, we had trustees who were in charge of different sub things, and they were like the building trustees. I was never a building trustee, I was like the program. But mm -hmm. I think that was an effective way. So once the new library is built, you'd think that the people who work there and then the trustees would have. And I think that's why the Goodwin is in as good a shape as it is. There was people, we were 
we were on it. I mean, we mm -hmm. every meeting we would have, we went through like laboriously Checklist. the checklist, the budget. So um, I think there's a good model for that, at least on the library side. I'm not sure if Senior Center has a board. They have Council on Aging? Well, we, I mean, one of the first things that we did and actually before this uh, committee was formed, uh, we do have a um, list, a review list okay. for the, each building right. and what to look at right. uh, and yearly, do this yearly. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. So we do have that, right. the maintenance set up, but it's never, we've never had any funding to do it. Right. Okay. That was something else I put in here. It was just a you know maintenance plan for these buildings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Too many times we've we've got old it's buildings we here. we yeah. can't figure out how much we should budget for, and now we've got brand new buildings and we should know that things are going to have life cycle costs. Yeah. So we should put them in now and then we should we should budget for them every year following mm -hmm. yeah. just to be smart about it. I was under the impression the OPM is supposed to come up with that. at least that basic list for the first you know, initial. Yeah. Uh, Again, we got to go back to the contract and find out exactly what this book is. Right. We should, we should compare the scopes of work for the OPMs and, and then, you know, hopefully Suzanne and, and Allison will validate this with that with them, but it would be helpful to have their scopes. So see. right now, each committee would be on groups that would know that what's in these contracts? And Mr. Nixon. Yeah. So really, um, I assume that um, Nixon has his plate full. Um, but maybe that's where you need Larry right away to see if these couple of things that we just brought up are in there mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. training and, yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. Um, because he would know what to look for versus uh, what uh, David Nixon, you know, he, he's a finance guy. Yeah. You know, and I, I've kind of, I don't want to say discounted, but I haven't really said a lot about what this committee could help out with. And, you know, I mean, if I were to get copies of the schedules, the construction schedules, I'd, I'd volunteer my time to put together a, a master schedule and review it with all of you and then to the select board. Mm -hmm. There's a few other things I'm sure that we, we could talk through here. I, don't know what the select board's thoughts are on how we could be used here. I think we're willing and able. It's just sometimes we're we're kind of left out for political reasons or otherwise. But you know, I mean, we're we're here to help. Yeah, yeah. It's. I would say, just how do we limit the amount of confusion? You know, yeah. like if you guys are involved, there's yeah, there's exactly. a building committee. You know, there's the select board. It just starts getting really, who's doing, keeping track of it all can get confusing. So I think it's, your help is appreciated. It's trying to keep track of everything that's going on. That's the tricky part, you would, you would, in my mind. You would have to come up with a real uh, chain of command or routing system on how it would go if we were going to help to report to you guys. Mm -hmm. um, re report to the building inspector, even though he's part of this committee, um, or how you know, or yeah. if you go back to in the other direction to the two building committees. Mm -hmm. um, I almost think that from all the rumors that happen around town on these buildings, that it would be best that you guys are more involved. You know, the board of select, mm -hmm. select board, however you want to call them now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, because it was, people were saying there was too much in committee, and then the select board didn't seem to know what was up at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, there's a lot going on, so. Right. It that, is. That's true, but, you know, it's, again, you guys yeah, are, yeah, yeah. are at the top of the pile here. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, we're, I'm reverting back up to you because you're the highest authority that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, versus the voters yeah. at the end, but <laughs> yeah. that's too late sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They also have the authority to give the authority to some other group. And, and true, and exactly. But and that needs, that could happen. Mm -hmm. and, and, and a lot of times it's by not making a decision by any board or 
group that everything gets screwed up because nothing's happening and then it costs money and people go mm -hmm. in different directions and nobody knows we're going this way you know what I mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we're here to try to uh, help and make things efficient and you know work everybody should be working together not yeah. individually or individual groups I mean my thoughts after this meeting is it seems like we should probably be using Gary more than we are and use him as more of a point person and coordinating a lot of these things so that, you know, if he needs help on this or that schedule, yeah, hand that to David. He's going to put that together and then kind of know it from there. I don't know, but a coordinator that does it yeah. more than we are right now. Mm -hmm. And he's already here. He's already on the payroll. I don't know. I mean, it seems like we can... But it, it, he's not getting paid he's not at a level okay. to do that work that's that was the oh, problem like a uh, whatever he needs yeah. he, he that has to be reviewed and modified mm -hmm. and again I go back to what has happened in the past I am and somewhat intrigued about, about I know we mentioned Larry we mentioned Gary yeah. um, I am somewhat intrigued about thinking about how you could expand the LPM's responsibilities to help on a program-wide. And just throwing this out there, I mean, Collier's is our OPM for town buildings, period. They're doing two of them right now, but, but the their marching orders were to be our OPM, the town's OPM's, whereas Solden is for the library only. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think I would just maybe think about that in terms of if you wanted to expand one of them to, to do the master schedule or to mm -hmm. report on funding for all of the town projects that are that are that are going mm -hmm. on. It's not too far of a reach right. for them to do the complicated sort of the money budget schedule stuff. You know, I'm not saying Gary or others couldn't help with the other things, but yeah, it's just a thought. I mean, we there's that's what they're paid for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're yeah, doing and they're two buildings. Yeah, they're yeah. doing two buildings, and they're the the I mean the one of them is probably not likely to start while the other two are happening, right? The start date for the, for the uh, right. substation. I mean, is it even set? Yeah, I mean, there's no real start date where the there library has a deadline date. where it has to be finished. And the senior right. center <clears throat> sort of got pushed out front because of the library. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, they should, Collier should really take the lead position. Mm -hmm. um, and since they have to really dig first, even though the... Yeah, the, I'm not the, taking sides over the library, it's just that mm -hmm. Collier's is the town's OPM and, and right. Sullivan is the library's OPM. Right, yeah. but Sullivan holds the contract for the demolition of the, mm -hmm. the which is like the, the, the key right there. They start the whole thing by knocking the building down. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's hard to say Collier's you take yeah, but, uh, the yeah. OP, uh, the so other you had OP. to have somebody as an overarching person yeah. that reports to select board members that you might, you might yeah. think about. It. Yeah, and I know that in conversations with Phil, he's not going to be there full time mm -hmm. here. You know, he's going to be here part time and mm -hmm. they're from Connecticut somewhere. So, you know, he's not right around the corner by any means to get here. So, but Gary is. Yeah. 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 But are they going to be available enough to do their job adequately? You know, it's... Uh, and at what price? That's, it's contract. This is where you get to the contract. That yeah. was in the contract, how many hours they're supposed to be here. And that's okay. what, that was what was in the contract. Okay. Collier's has represented other lo local municipalities without incident okay. that, I, that I'm aware of. So I'm, I'm not terribly worried about the distance. Okay. I mean, hell, I've been dri driving to Connecticut for 21 years now. <laughs> yeah. And I come home every night. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're obligated under contract to provide certain. Yeah. You know. So, again, it, it comes up to contract, but nobody knows what's in the contract, at least at this table. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to say it again. I think somewhere wherever the money is get Larry to review these two things because all these things are coming up and uh, before you start digging 
we better know what's in that contract. And if we if it isn't there, we better cover it somewhere because you don't want to get the building up and then all of a sudden these change orders are coming up or, well, that wasn't included in the job. And oh. go back to the town meeting the third time for money for the <laughs> senior center and, you know, it, it's, it's ridiculous Could we already. just get copies of those contracts for this committee to look at first? I don't see why not. Yeah, and so what I did was the inverse of that and sent this to them and said, confirm mm -hmm. that this yes. is what your understanding of your scopes of work yet are. Mm -hmm. That's a start. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing missing here is the referee, right? Yes. I mean, ultimately, yeah. there's the person who oversees this and says that, you know, this takes precedent, this is what we have to do, and then we, have, we just have to determine who the town is best mm -hmm. served with. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Now, ha have you, you haven't gotten a copy of the contracts? I don't have a copy of those contracts. But I could try to find it, but I'd have to be searching or I'd ask the Ud Nixon for a copy. And the contracts aren't all soup to nuts at the beginning. So Sullivan may have negotiated the first phases of their contract, but not the construction services. Mm -hmm. And the same for Collier's, or, you know, so when they may not even got that far yet. And that would be, scope. all those things are electronic at this point. So. But there is no server that I know of. I don't know how to find documentation like that easily. But, right. you know, uh, okay, so I'm yeah, just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to so, say that. Somebody yeah. could, um, somewhere somebody knows how to send it to you, to David, to yeah. the rest of your board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as because a select board member, you should be able to request it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can request at some, it. At it's some point, you're gonna get, you're gonna, you'll be bored at home, you want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I got that one. Yeah, yeah, I know. At some point, my son will, will mm -hmm. get on uh, wherever he is, and he'll <laughs> yeah. he'd probably. He's got more time in the air wherever yeah. he is to read so, things like that. So the point is, it'd be nice that you guys had it because, you know, we're asking you these questions, and in fairness. Yeah, you know, I wish it, we could just say, "Oh, here's the kind of like beating you, you up it? here at yeah, the table," yeah. but yeah, nobody gave it to you yet. Yeah, and Tim should have it because you know that's his thing, and that's that's what you do for a living. You know, yeah, like, he does. You know, it's it's not not what I do for a living, but there's two guys that are experienced at reading these things. Um, boring as all get out, though. Yeah, but you know <laughs> what you're reading when you're falling asleep in it. You know? yeah, yeah. So, um, for the town's good, it'd be nice that the board of selectmen got oh, yeah, and yeah. a few a few others that mm -hmm. are key people here that that need it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And how how far off are their the, the, their their proposal is their contract going to be? Is it going to be fairly close? What do you mean by that? Well, the the you know we put out requests for proposals to see what they would say, see how they would conduct the business, and we reviewed their proposals. And how close yeah. is that going to be to the contract? Yeah, it should should be very close. Should be close. Yeah, I'm sure. I have I at least I have the the proposals from people that we reviewed right and, and even if there's not a formalized scope and, and contract written for construction phase services Colliers and Sullivan already have a, a number in mind and a yeah. scope in mind and yeah, they could yeah. I'm sure they would share the scope with with us and then we could just validate that against this and make sure we've got everything covered and we can always talk to Phil about it on Friday yeah. during that meeting Friday's coming yeah up. We have a senior center building committee on Friday, so mm -hmm. we can talk then too. But I always feel weird asking a guy that we have a contract with what the contract is. <laughs> I feel like he can tell us whatever he wants at that point. <laughs> nope, not covered. <laughs> yeah, but somewhere at the bottom, somebody had to sign yeah, off. Yeah, on the yeah, copy, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell, tell him to bring a copy of this scope. I'm sure the board. select board signed it, the contract. It's a good knowing who signed it. I mean, I read their um, other, you know, change orders and that kind of thing. But, or, you know, when we had to redesign the senior center, read that, but I haven't seen the original. Can I just change the subject? Sure. Well, I just want to. I just want to verify that Christian feels like he's got something to talk about if this is on the agenda tomorrow night. Yeah. Is anybody going to come? Are any of you guys coming to the meeting tomorrow night? Well, I, I posted it for. Okay. NBC yeah. to I, be I, there. I plan on being here. We're going to be in Providence at for a three o'clock meeting, which I'm hoping to get home for afterwards. But so yeah, theoretically, I'll be here. Okay. And that was my question: is what 
is going to, what's going to come up tomorrow at the municipal at the yeah, select I mean, board meeting, uh, meeting for us? It seems like the big things, you know, well, that are impacting you guys are, you know, really coming up for funding for these projects and what how we're going to do this modification you know modifications to this mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. seems to be the biggest question right now where are the funds coming from? where are those funds coming from and then you know i think having this list and talking about this list is good and saying you know how can we get gary probably more on board with managing the day-to-day -day on these projects like what do we need to do to make that happen mm -hmm. he's already here he's already familiar with them how do we just get him a little bit more responsibility there to make decisions? And, and then we need to, you know, I think we still need to clarify what the OPMs are really responsible for. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then maybe fortunate. providing a clear conduit for communication. Is it as simple as an email to the chairs of every committee that are involved with the project? Because it seems like, I mean, this is my first meeting, but it seems like that could be something that could be useful. Mm -hmm. If people don't know what other committees are if we're supposed to have the access to the communication, those conduits need to be opened up. So maybe mm -hmm. just a, the select board could maybe help us out. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, as far as Gary goes, uh, you've got a very talented person. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the concerns that may come up tomorrow um, is somebody's going to say, well, now the highway department should work. I feel you could get a part time, retired, truck driver, equipment operator, that you could fill 20 hours a week. A lot of, if a guy's retired or maybe even just wa wanted to work part time, mm -hmm. you could fill that uh, for snow plowing or through the summer or through the next winter, part time when Gary is using this thing. Yeah. A temporary position. You don't have to lock him in forever, but you may get it. You may get a person. We've, you know, we've had many part time snow plowers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The winter. yeah. Many winters. You know, mm -hmm. I was one of them, but um, you know, I would look at it that way mm -hmm. versus saying, "No, we can't, we can't take Gary away from the highway department." I think it'd be you got Gary's too valuable not to use him here versus mm -hmm. um, running a piece of equipment. Yeah, yeah I can't yeah. agree more. I, I just he's he he knows the properties. He's been with town for a long mm -hmm. time. He knows his way around. He knows who to talk to when there's yeah. questions and. He's, I he's, he's talented. Yeah, and I personally think it was a mistake now when I look back to put that position under DPW. I think it needs to be um, looked at again and maybe set up separately to some extent because um, this, this pushing back and forth is, is going to always happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, DP, DPW guys the directors in my opinion they're 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 all encompassing with regard to utilities and everything else in the town mm -hmm. and generally where they get involved in the buildings is just the minor maintenance issues and uh, I, I, maybe it should be thought differently that the the maintenance person that we had that we will have Hopefully, um, is is possibly not totally under DPW, but he can work on, for DPW as needed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're a small enough town that that titles that that you know, people can do things <laughs> beyond their 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 title, their, their job responsibilities. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But that was. That might have been. Do we have a, like a property superintendent kind of thing? Because no. that's what we have. It. I work at Stark but we have a property superintendent. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he does lots of things, but his main job is, you know, I don't know. So it could be. Well, that was what this yeah. it was for. Why we hired Gary was yeah. to oversee all the buildings, mm -hmm. and then report to the this committee, this. The, our, this committee's responsibility was generally looking at uh, the, year, the year and what right. should be done right. and um, prioritize those projects and then go to the town meeting for the select board and the town meeting for the, for the funding. 
And it's, it's important, I think, too, to think that for the future of the town is that the, a position isn't linked to a person. So mm -hmm. he's a talented person and that's granted, but just to have, for the town to have this position, to keep it or fund it more, mm -hmm. like you're saying, if it's, if it's underfunded, if this person or this position requires a different level a of salary. Of, a lot of positions you know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> you want to keep talented yeah. people in town. Mm -hmm. So. Well, hopefully that's helpful. I, yeah, I yeah, know yeah, there's going to yeah. be more discussion, and I, I do feel that um, at some point here, we probably ought to start listing all the things that need to be accomplished before that demolition goes. And if we don't move on a person right away. This committee could certainly organize a list of what has to get done and when and how how it's progressing, so that at least mm -hmm. we're staying on track with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you know, I'm thinking about all this stuff, and you're most of it's in your head. You you know what we've got to do. We've got to talk to this person, that person, but it's not clear to me until it's on a list somewhere yeah. with a ball and court absolutely right. yeah. and a needed by date and all that yeah. other mm -hmm. stuff to keep it organized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, we don't do a lot of those in our committee. We, we probably should get, you know, get into, you know, yeah. some more uh, formalized communication like that. And then on that line, I'm just thinking about this modification work. Should we have a schedule for that to see when we really need to get things yeah. done? Yeah. Well, I mean, I even for the asbestos work, didn't you have something like that where you had, mm -hmm. you know, this was going to happen? Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, we, yeah. No, and it, we had to modify it every once in a while, but no, we had it on paper and we added other you, tasks as when we found out that. Do you have any time to sort of tee that up for, for this one? I don't even know where it is anymore. I, I mean, know. I mean, do you have time to think about oh. like this program for no, a couple I, hours? I, no, okay. no, not with Fair enough. down the street. <laughs> So, um, there's not a real date yet on everybody's going to be out of Booker School by a certain... And we don't have a hard date at this point. I'd have to know where the library is a little bit better with their schedule, but I mean... We set that, up the end of April, April beginning of yeah. March. That was... May, yeah. Uh, April. Yeah. <laughs> and, and say that's when we, we had a drop dead date of middle of May. Yeah, yeah. We said it had to be out. Because so we, but we didn't start uh, listing the departments and say, you know, <coughs> prioritizing which one should go first and second. Because th there's no funding right now. We, In order for us to even think about that, we have yet to get these projects here yeah, started. We have to get this started. And then we'll know when these are done, then we can get transition people over. But, and I hear everything you're saying, but all that does is putting a kibosh to those two big projects. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't say everybody's out of that um, building by May 1, mm -hmm. because way before May 1, and I don't know if this is the very next step, but I would be saying, where's the abatement company coming in? Maybe somebody else has to come in before then, but I think abatement has to come in, abate that whole building, whatever is in there. We got to be out quite a bit, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. we got utilities, and then this and this and this mm -hmm. before the shovel comes mm -hmm. to knock it down. So you know, it's like, how long can everybody talk about we got to do this? And uh, you know, I only been here for a couple of months, and it's like. We're talking the same things, and, yeah. 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 and we're not, we're not yeah. no traction yeah. exactly. here, you know. So, um, you're you know, absolutely that, right. Yeah. yeah, you know that you're going to run into a big problem. Oh yeah, yeah. With the building. So, I hopefully tomorrow you guys are going to say, "This is it. We don't care where you're going. You're out of that building by then." And, yeah. And I guess, you know, they talked about Holy Rosary or most Holy Rosary. Yeah, that's in the yeah. works. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. hopefully that's mm -hmm. moving along. And, and yeah, there's yeah, an alternative yeah. if that falls through. There's a the couple. Mall. We've got the mall. We we'll probably have a couple other places. That we yeah, have. yeah. There's a couple mm -hmm. last minute places, but. Mm -hmm. It costs money. Yeah. <laughs> Where are we going to get that money? I don't know if you're going to get 
that place too cheap either because the yeah. diocese tied into it, and then everything's on. Well, but on it's camera. voted. It's Cat. voted by the um, the church committee. They yeah, kind of they they yeah. they say a lot as far as what the cost is and everything. But so the, that the is diocese. We'll see. I don't know. I'm. I, yeah. I just felt it's not when just the diocese. watching the mm -hmm. selectmen's meetings and being at a couple of these meetings. Mm -hmm. um, we gave all our negotiation away <laughs> publicly mm -hmm. before we even got there. Yeah, well, that's you know the problem mean? with the select. You know, we're yeah. that's the only time we can talk. Yeah, open <laughs> meeting, but, but, right. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's, this is the uh, challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. It was like, boy, I'd hate to <laughs> hate to have to negotiate for you guys now. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah. yeah, but anyways. Okay, so we'll try and attend tomorrow and uh, and, yeah. and help uh, clarify this a little bit. Yeah. Or, yeah, I mean, we have this, so, um, I mean, you guys really need the funds to really make progress, so. Yep. Okay. Um, was that our main agenda item? I know we've got Alan's report. I don't know if any of you had a chance to, to read uh, uh, what was uh, created by him. And do you understand the sort of backstory of this? I didn't, I didn't see this to tell you the truth. I think we have a little bit of time. I think we do. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been working with him. And full disclosure, he's my uncle, right? So, uh, I, I see him at holidays. <laughs> I've seen him a couple times recently. But, um, you know, I, I, did, I did indicate to him that I thought maybe it needed to be a little more factual and a little less nostalgic in a way. And I think he picked up on that in his, his version, too, which you have. Um, and you know he recognizes it's not a historic documentation, officially a historic documentation, but it's a it's a starting p point to discuss with Mass Historical, uh, you know what what's the next step needed to really you know what what kind of level of documentation are they looking for before the that wrecking ball hits that building? Do you know who at MHC is looking this over? I don't. I don't know if he has a contact yet, and, and um, my understanding is, you know, Hadley's historical commission has not been overly collaborative with him at this point. Um, so he's doing this without a lot of input from others. But I think he recognizes he's not professional in this. He's yeah. just taking the reins of it, and mm -hmm. hoping that he's moving it forward enough that you know they'll tell him what what's needed. Um, certainly, if you want to reach out to him, I you've, will. You've like got I used to be on this tremendous commission. amount of experience compared to. The I will, and I'll committee. find out who on the historical commission can review it. So. Well, you did come to me and say that you needed a letter from us, stating that um, it is our opinion that uh, the best alternative for the town is to demolish it and build there. Yeah. So we do have to put together a letter. At some point to get to them. So, so this wasn't completely approved to knock it down. Oh yeah. Not Maybe by not. the state. Not by the state. Right. The state's asking for, you know, the the most like six, six assurance that we've done We're due diligence yeah. in that yeah. sense. Yes. Yeah. And then they also want to make sure that we've documented the building under their okay. requirements. So there's two things that we have to do. But they weren't terribly we clear about the level of documentation required, and that's part of why he did this, is that he's hoping to just put this out and say, is this good, or are you looking for something more formal? Because, you know, we've spent, my, my company's done a few of these, we've spent a lot of money on hiring preservationists to do this mm -hmm. and yeah. to document it with, with photographs and, and yeah, I heard that historic they just drawings. And hundreds of photographs of inside and outside of the building very specific formats, black and white, you know, I mean, just, you know, there's things that are necessary if that's the level of documentation that the state requires. So we, we don't know until, until they have So is all that documentation part of the budget of the new library? I don't know. I, I would doubt it. I doubt it. I think he's probably just doing it out of the goodness of his heart. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you I know, mean, vol volunteer. whether whether our town had to hire a preservationist or not, I doubt that's in the budget, in any budget. 
Well, I'm just kind of bringing that up for you because, you know, we're looking for 20, 23,000 here, and then, but if there was money needed there, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is just something that should probably be talked about before, again, somebody puts the brakes on a project, or the buildings, because you can check all the boxes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would make sense if the library's contract, I, I, contractor. Personally, I thought that was... You know, yeah, I this is the that first I'm hearing of this. In the uh, newspaper that the state had an issue with it, the town said okay. You know? but then the there state was a had letter issue. written to the town a year or two yeah. ago. Yeah, but I thought that was all cleared up. Um, but if it I isn't cleared up... I think they're asking for just the final report mm -hmm. and that everyone, mm -hmm. the town boards are okay with it. They've done mm -hmm. their due diligence. And I think it's, you know... When I was on the historical commission, we start we started to draft a demolition delay bylaw, and we never had that. And un if we if we had that, we had said no, we can't demolish it. it gives a review period, and there's a formal process mm -hmm. to go through. So I think they're kind of asking a little bit for that now. Yeah. But but again, I go back. But they can't tell us that we can't. Right. The project won't be held up because yeah. okay. no, it okay. won't. So that's just uh, you know again. I'll go back to the Larry name or the Gary Bird name. That uh, it's another box that needs to be checked, yeah. and if there's money needed to accomplish what somebody's asking us for to need, no, you and the rest of your committee needs to. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so we don't want to fund it if the library already has it in there. Yeah. Well, true. Right. Oh, right. Alan did uh, volunteer to be part of our meeting, uh, but it was a little bit last minute. I didn't want to invite him when we had this discussion. Mm -hmm. But he's willing to come in at our next meeting and, and do that. But I think Claire, if you were willing to reach out to him yeah, first, I'll reach out to him. That's a good um, idea. maybe yeah. maybe get make sure he's on the right track, mm -hmm. you know, discuss it with him. Yeah. And then um, maybe we'll see a revised report next time or, yeah. or not. But you know, at least we can validate it somehow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. Any other business tonight? to adjourn. So moved. I'll second it. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thanks on the minutes. Appreciate that.